to this installment of AA Computers and Technology. Today we're going to be taking a look at this 2.5 inch drive enclosure by Sabrent or Sabrent, however you want to pronounce this. I picked this up at Amazon uh, for $9.99 as a last minute Christmas gift. So that's why I am doing the unboxing separately. I'm going to do a voiceover of that um, because I had to get the drive in here and out to the person that I was going to give it to, which was my mother. So um, I bought this to make my life and her life easier. She has a ton of pictures and I thought, you know what, it's going to be great to just get her an external hard drive to put all of those pictures on. And this was a really cheap alternative to doing so. I had a 320 gigabyte Western Digital blue hard drive in the back, threw that in here and it's been working absolutely fine. So let's go ahead and get to the unboxing and then I'll have my thoughts and everything else afterwards. All right, so I've now switched over to voiceover mode and you should be looking at the yellow package that the drive shipped in now. Nice packaging. Just gonna rip it open, pull the drive out. As you can see, the box itself is plastic wrapped, so I'm gonna have to grab something to cut that open. I'll just give you a 360 degree look at the box itself now. Sorry if it's not in focus at some points in the video. Camera does not have autofocus and it gets on my nerves sometimes. Just gonna grab a pen because, of course, scissors aren't nearby. Rip a hole in the drive and take that, or not in the drive, but the drive packaging and take the uh, plastic off. So some pretty friendly packaging, nothing too hard. The box just pops right open as you'll see in a second. There you go, so I, I would say that's some pretty friendly packaging right there. The uh, the drive enclosure is wrapped in another plastic baggie. Going to go ahead and pull it out. And this point actually surprised me because the top slid right off. I assumed they would uh, ship it with the top screwed in, so I was confused at that point. But as I dug, or dug further into the box, I found some drive screws and a nice little screwdriver included with it. Um, so they just leave the top off for you so you can throw your drive in there. It actually makes things a lot easier because you don't have to take the top off. Okay, I'm going to put those off to the side. You can see uh, it comes with a little case that you can put it in. Uh, the case smells really funny and honestly it feels pretty cheap. I'm probably not going to use it. Just going to toss that off to the side. It's not very nice looking. There is our USB 3.0 cable. It's about a foot long. Just a nice little courtesy card. And there you can see the screwdriver and screws that came with it. Uh, and at this point, I realized what the heck was going on with this. And last but not least, you can see the user manual. And here comes the fun part, actually installing the drive into the drive enclosure. And no, I'm not going to put a PNY solid state drive into the drive enclosure. I just have my 2.5 inch Western Digital hard drive in here because I had nowhere else to put it. As you can see, there is a small spacer on the back of that hard drive that's going to come back into play in just a couple minutes. I'm going to change the focus so you guys can get a better look at this hard drive. This is a 320 gigabyte Western Digital hard drive rotating at 5,400 RPM. So it's not the fastest thing in the world, but it's going to be completely adequate for what my mom is going to use it for, which is just storing pictures. Um, so it doesn't have to be blazing fast. At this point, I'm just going to take the front panel of the drive enclosure and insert it into the hard drive. Just line up the SATA data and the SATA power connectors and push in. There are no screws or anything holding it in place, um, which makes things a lot easier, but it's also kind of awkward trying to get the drive into the drive enclosure because sometimes the uh, SATA connector will slip out and you have to take it out, line it up again and try to get the drive into the enclosure again. So that kind of frustrated me, uh, but once you have the drive fully inserted into the drive enclosure, the drive enclosure pushes the drive into the SATA, uh, SATA connector, so you don't have to worry about it slipping when you actually have everything installed. It's just a matter of getting it installed in the first place. All right, so I finally got the front panel successfully on. I'm going to grab that bag of screws and that tiny little screwdriver and secure the front panel. And that's really all there is to it. It's a really, really easy installation. And as you can see, I did have to switch out screwdrivers when I was installing the front panel to the drive enclosure because I find that the one that comes with the drive enclosure is just really small and awkward to use. It's not really a big deal, it's just a personal note I want to make. 
And from here, the rest of the setup was a breeze. All I did was plug the drive into my USB 2.0 hub. The drive spun up, had no issues with the drive enclosure itself. I brought up disk management, formatted the hard drive, and made a couple folders on the drive for my mom's pictures, and I was good to go. Okay, so now that I'm done with the voiceover, let me go ahead and touch on a couple of other things about the drive enclosure and its accompanying contents. Um, there was one quick correction I would like to make, and that's that the USB 3.0 cable is actually a bit longer than a foot. Uh, I think I said in the voiceover that this was a foot long, it's actually two and a half to three feet long. So that's actually a good thing, because in my opinion, a foot is a little bit too short. So I'm just going to toss this off to the side, uh, because I don't really have any other issues with the USB cable. It actually feels really nice. Um, you're not going to have any problems with it anytime soon. I mean, you can't really go wrong with a USB cable. As far as features go, this is a pretty basic drive enclosure. There's nothing extra. Um, all you have here is a USB 3.0 port and the indication light, and then the rest is just case. You can see there's a nice little uh, Sabrent logo or Sabrent logo on the back. I'm just gonna plug it in to show you that blue LED, uh, which indicates if the drive is reading or writing. So I'm gonna plug it into my external battery pack. It should light up. There we go. I hope, hopefully that's coming out on camera. It's a blue LED right there. That's just your indication light for the drive. And really that's about it. As far as cooling goes, I mean, there's no external fins or a fan on it. It's just relying on the aluminum case um, to draw heat away from the hard drive. And uh, really, I mean, I wouldn't suggest putting a 10,000 RPM 2.5 inch drive in here or anything uh, because it might get hot really quick. And especially to the touch, if you pick it up with that drive, you're gonna notice that it's pretty warm. Now taking a look at the drive enclosure itself, I didn't really address any cons with this, but there are a couple issues that I do have with this drive enclosure. The first one is uh, that when I took it out of the box without the front panel on, I was worried because I could put pressure on these two points and the aluminum chassis would bend in. Uh, but once I installed the front panel, I didn't have that problem anymore and it actually feels pretty solid. Uh, the second problem that I had with uh, the driving closure is the fact that there's this tiny little gap here. It's not really an issue as far as um, the function of the driving closure goes, but it does look kind of cheap. I mean, I wish, I wish there was some way to completely secure this in place, but I mean, no matter how much pressure I put on this front panel, I cannot get this little gap uh, to go away. I don't know. It's just not lined up properly. They didn't machine it properly, um, and the dimensions aren't quite right, so it's not going to go in all the way. And here's a better look at the gap between the front panel and the chassis of the drive enclosure. As you can see, it's not too big, but it is noticeable. And while I have the uh, drive enclosure close up to the camera's microphone, let me go ahead and demonstrate the third issue that I have with this little drive enclosure. You hear that? That's actually the drive slapping against the side of the drive enclosure because it is not properly held in place. They don't have any padding or anything on these sides. They have padding on the back, but they don't have padding on this side or this side to prevent the drive from wobbling around inside the drive enclosure. Now you're probably wondering, well, why didn't you just slap on that hard drive spacer that you had on the drive earlier? I tried to do that, but the solder joints on the back of the logic board for this drive enclosure would actually get caught on the drive enclosure when I would try to shut it with the drive spacer on the drive. So I couldn't use the drive spacer because it just wouldn't close. Um, so I'm not sure how to solve that. I might try to throw some sort of padding inside here, but that's just really annoying because when you're traveling with it uh, and it's in a briefcase or something like that, it's going to be bumping around. It's going to be slapping against the side of the drive enclosure. So that is my third grievance with this little drive. And here I'm just going to take a couple seconds to touch on this cheap, cheap little case that came with the drive enclosure. Honestly, I see no point in using it. I mean, getting the drive in here is extremely awkward. I can never get it right. It's just a pain in the rear end. Um, it's not going to save your drive if you drop it or anything. It's really thin uh, and it smells funny. So, I mean, in my opinion, I would just toss it off to the side. It is a nice little bonus, but honestly, I'm never going to use it. So I know some of you guys are probably here for either a performance test or a benchmark. And don't worry, I have you covered because that's exactly what we are about to do right now. As I said earlier, I have just a standard 5,400 RPM traditional hard drive in here. I don't have any solid state drives in the back to test this out with. So we're not going to be able to max this out as far as speed goes. What I do want to do is take an identical drive that I have. I have another drive that's the exact same model as this. 
I'm going to put it in a computer with a SATA interface. I'm going to benchmark it using Crystal Disk Mark. We're going to check out the results. And I'm going to take this drive in the USB 3.0 enclosure, plug it into a USB 3.0 port, and then benchmark it as well. We'll compare the results and see if this drive enclosure causes any reduction in read or write speeds. And this is that Dell Inspiron 15 that I was talking about that has that identical Western Digital Blue hard drive in it. I'm going to go ahead and run Crystal Disk Mark version 5.1, the 64-bit edition. And I'm just going to leave these settings all stock and run all of the tests. And then I will take the drive enclosure, plug it into the USB 3.0 port on this laptop, and then run the same test on it. I'm going to use the same laptop just for consistency's sake. So let's go ahead and start it on the hard drive, which is already in the laptop, which is hooked up to the SATA. I believe this is SATA. Out of three and here are the results from the drive inside the system. I'll let you read all of those. There's no point in me reading them off. But in theory, um, since USB is capable of transfer speeds up to, I believe, over 600 megabytes per second, we should get nearly these same speeds using the drive enclosure. So let's go ahead and hook up the USB 3.0 drive enclosure to my USB 3.0 ports and run the benchmarks again. All right, so the external hard drive is hooked up and ready to go. As you can see, I went ahead and popped open another instance of Crystal Disk. This way we could do a side-by-side -side comparison. I have the data from the internal drive right here and I'm just about to benchmark the external drive. So let's see if the logic inside the external drive causes any sort of transfer speed reduction. I'm gonna go ahead and run the tests and I will get back to you. Well, this is really strange. I went ahead and ran that benchmark and was kind of disappointed at the results. And I had to run it again because I thought it might just be an anomaly, but no, the USB 3.0 enclosure is actually cutting our read and write speeds in half compared to the drive hooked up to the SATA interface. So that's kind of disappointing. Surprisingly enough, the random read and write, the random read and write speeds did go up. I'm not exactly sure why. Um, but yeah, that's a, that's a pretty large reduction. I'm not exactly sure if it's just an anomaly with the hardware that I have. Um, so if anyone's getting different results, go ahead and post it in the comment section. I would love to hear if someone's getting uh, better results than I am because honestly, once again, I am kind of disappointed. Now for someone like my mom that's just transferring pictures onto the drive and video and maybe streaming some video off the drive, this reduction in speed is not really gonna be that big of a deal. Uh, 32 megabytes per second read speeds and 27 uh, megabytes per second write speeds are gonna be perfectly adequate for doing tasks such as those I just mentioned. Um, actually, this is a lot faster than a lot of the flash drives that she's been using. So it's gonna be, uh, believe it or not, a performance increase for her. Uh, but if you're someone that's trying to game off this drive or maybe you're trying to uh, edit some video off this drive enclosure, you're definitely gonna to have to factor in the speed reduction uh, when you're thinking about buying this drive because it might be an issue. So would I recommend buying this drive enclosure? Well, for $9.99, yes, the construction is decent, transfer speeds are okay, and uh, it does what it's supposed to do. You'd be hard pressed to find anything cheaper that can do the same things this can do. All right, so that's gonna be about it for this video, and I know I kept saying drive instead of drive enclosure. Come on, guys, give me a break. If you have any questions, comments, or concerns, you can go ahead and post a comment in the comment section. Don't forget to drop a like on this video, and of course, please do not forget to subscribe to my YouTube channel. I will see you guys in the next installment of AA Computers and Technology. Thanks for watching.